What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan here and today we're going to look at the source code for Grand Theft Auto 3. My understanding is this is not the original source code written by the Rockstar developers, but rather this is reverse engineered from the game binaries, I suppose, to produce source code. This is some crazy project. I didn't even know that people could do this. Uh, surprisingly, you can find it on GitHub. To the Rockstar lawyers out there, I'm looking at this strictly for educational purposes. So for me, this is really exciting because GTA 3 is a game that had a big impact on me as a kid. And to be able to look at the source code for this game and see the guts of it and how it was made. So the goal is to do a code review of this code base, go through a few different parts that seem interesting. I'm just gonna find something that seems interesting. I'll start off with weapons, for example. So here's weapon.h. So let's take a look at this. So here's a class that I assume represents a weapon. We have fire, fire melee, gun shell, shotgun, projectiles, so sniper, the reload. So it seems like this is one sort of monolithic class that handles everything for all weapons by the looks of it. Take a look at the implementation. So reload sample time. I'm guessing this is the amount of time it takes to reload. I don't know if this is in milliseconds or what, but yeah that's cool so here's the fire function i think this is probably where the guts of the logic is so we're passing in a c entity called shooter there's a source which is a vector but it looks like it's a switch case statement for all the different types of weapons so it's checking what type of weapon it is shotgun then fire shotgun if it's a pistol uzi or ak then fire instant sniper rifle fire that m16 it looks like it can support first person. So there's like a first person. Otherwise, it's just treated like the other ones. Rocket launcher. If the shooter's a pedestrian, seek target is not nil, then get the distance. Fire projectile. Molotov and grenade. Also doing fire projectile as well. Flamethrower, fire area of effect. Detonator. Use detonator. Heli cannon. So it looks like just about every type of weapon that you can have in this game is supported by this weapon class. Then there's fire melee, same function signature. And we're iterating through the nearby pedestrians, it looks like. That's the victim ped. Checking the type of pedestrian and some stuff. If the victim pedestrian is on the ground and the head is not above this position, then this seems to be the collision model so it changes the collision model to make it smaller i guess and yeah it's basically handling the collision for checking if your melee attack collided with the collision mesh of that pedestrian let's check out pedestrian to me that seems to be sort of the the big one right this actually is a pretty big file so this is the pedestrian file let's check this out and see like all the stuff that encompasses a pedestrian we got idle shuffle knee headbutt punch kick just about every type of melee attack you can do peace types i guess these are the bones pretty much of that character although i don't know if they have skeletal meshes i don't think so so they just kind of have these pieces I guess that's why GTA 3 characters look like Legos. A wait state, which I guess is part of the AI state machine. If it's waiting around, doing nothing, sort of idle, then it sort of can do all these different things. Traffic lights, cross the road, surprise, stuck. Objectives. Once again, I think this is part of the AI state machine. I think that's pretty cool to have these high level objectives that dictate sort of the smaller actions that the pedestrian performs. And here's pedestrian state, idle, look, flee, seek, pursue, pause, attack, fight, mug. So all the different actions that a pedestrian might take. There's a move state. It's either still, walking, running, or sprinting. A whole bunch of different conditional statements. It's interesting that, I mean, these are booleans by the look of it. This syntax limits the size of that aim gun, say something set dead avoid attacks all the stuff that you would expect to see from a non-playable character although i believe this class is used for both the player and the npcs let's check out some okay let's check out the cop pedestrian 
So that inherits from CPED. That's the base class that we just looked at. So yeah, all these different types of pedestrians inherit from that CPED base class. So roadblock, distance to target, beating suspect, stop and shoot. So it can clear pursuit, process control, set arrested character, set pursuit, arrest a player, scan for crimes, and then cop AI. Kind of curious to jump in and see what's happening here. So you can initialize it as a street cop, FBI, SWAT, Army, and they all have different skills and accuracy. Although even guys who are versed engineered this don't even know what this means. And they have certain weapons as well. This is pretty cool. Again, this concept of like having a monolithic class that represents all the different types at once, rather than having a base class. There's something to be said about this in terms of managing complexity. Because if you had the base pedestrian class and then you have the cop class that inherits from that pedestrian class, but then you have the street cop class that inherits from the cop class. If you have three layers of inheritance or more, it just starts to get pretty unwieldy. So maybe it was actually a good decision to do it this way. Uh, let's take a look at some vehicle stuff. Here we've got a helicopter class. Oh yeah, I forgot that game had helicopters in it. That's crazy, man. The status can be hover, chase player, fly away, shot down, or hover. It's not just that these helicopters can be controlled by the player if you get in it, but they can actually be AI controlled as well. Which probably isn't that complicated, I guess, as long as they stay above the height of the buildings. A bunch of hard-coded paths. It's interesting, there's different points along a path, I guess. If the helicopter type is Catalina and the status is not shot down, I'm guessing what this is doing is these represent the different points of a path. Distance is less than this. Okay, so if we're within a certain distance of it, then we go ahead and increment the path state, which is then going to go to the next one and the next one and the next one. So that makes sense. This is an interesting way of doing that. I've never seen this pattern for following a path. You have this sort of state machine handling it. Then once we get to this point, takeoff, I don't really understand what that means because I would think we're already in the air. But then once it gets to this point, now it's a new path. It's the dam path. So first it was the Catalina, then it was this one, the dam path, then it was the short path and the long path. So it's basically multiple paths. And as soon as it's done with one path, it moves on to the next path. So that's pretty clever. Okay, let's take a look at the boat. Uh, let's take a look at the header file, actually. So this extends from the vehicle class. So there is a base vehicle class through which all, I guess, drivable things inherit from. Thrust, rotation, a boolean to check if it's in water or if the propeller is in water. Damage, acceleration, float, steering. Yep. So now I'm taking a look at the vehicle class because that's probably where the core logic for all vehicles is. So we have an enum here, random, missing, parked, or permanent vehicle. The lock state, see they're not used, unlock, locked, lock out the player, force shut. Got some enums for each door, panels, lights, pieces of the car. State, normal, spinning, skidding, or fixed. Hmm, interesting. Flight model. Dodo. Okay, this is for like airplanes, I guess. So then vehicle extends from physical. So we do have multiple levels of inheritance here. If it's a law enforcer, an ambulance, fire truck, if the engine is on, just about every little thing. Like I really like the sense of detail here. If it's a van or a bus, if it's big, if it's low. And the documentation here is awesome too, how they left comments about all these different things. That's really lovely. And then vehicles have health. Oh, okay. So when the health is 250, that's when it sets on fire. So set up the driver. If there is a driver, return the driver. Otherwise, we don't have a driver yet. So we say P driver equals C population, add pedestrian and car this. Now that makes me wonder what this C population thing is. Driver, set the vehicle to this. Driver, my vehicle, register reference. Driver, end vehicle equals true. Driver, set pedestrian state to driving. And if it's a bus, then do not render the pedestrian in the car. See, stuff like this is interesting because this is the vehicle. Like, what kind of constraints do you have in terms of what objects can mutate other objects? Here we have the vehicle, which is directly setting the value of member variables on the driver object, which is a CPED. In my eyes, I would probably, I don't know. 
I don't know what the right answer to that is. I know whatever you do, you probably want to be consistent with how you do that throughout the code base. So here we're looking at C population. There's a function called add ped in car. I'm sure that model is loaded. Variable names is always another thing I pay attention to when I'm looking at other people's code. And this code base is very lax and very chill the way they name things. 90% of the time, it's like a good variable name, but sometimes it's like, yeah. Um, kind of curious about the cop logic. So let's say scan for crimes, player vehicle equals find player vehicle, look for car alarms, player vehicle and player vehicle is a car and the alarm is on and the distance between this cop and the player vehicle is less than 20 units. Find the player pedestrian and set their wanted level to one. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in this code base, so I don't even know where to start looking. Uh, gangs kind of seems interesting. Okay, so we got different gangs, the Mafia, Triad, Diablos, Yakuza, Yardi, Columbia, Hoods, 7-8. So here's a little thing I noticed sometimes is this idea of creating an enum. It starts at zero and it'll increment. And then for the last enum, you put num and then the name of the enum. So that'll report nine because there's nine different zero, one, two, three, but it really should be 10. This number is going to naturally increment. So it is a neat little trick. So it initializes in the vehicle model info based on the gang, set gang weapons, pedestrian mode. So let's see emergency ped, which I assume are like firefighters and whatnot, ambulance and firefighters. Yeah, fireman AI and medic AI. Let's take a look at that. In range, if they're within 30 units, process control. If the pet is in control, one thing I wanna talk about is this function is in control. So when it comes to having AI or any character for that matter, I kind of found this to be interesting. So is in control if it's not in the air and it's not landing and the health is greater than zero, then it is in control. And I kind of like that. It's this idea that it's not about if you're just dead, right? They don't just check the health. They also check the state of that player. Let's check out this AI. Function was buggy and incomplete in both GTA 3 and VC. Fireman had to be within five meter range of the fire. I beat some code from medic AI to make it work. So this is an example of where I feel like this code is probably somewhat representative of the original source code, but they probably took some artistic liberties to fix some bugs and kind of improve it as well. So if the state of this pedestrian is ready, then get the nearest fire, then seek out that and then run. Interesting. So there's state seek and then run determine next state attended fire is that one and then if it's determining the next state then get the nearest fire and if that fire is different than the one we are already attending then seek that fire run otherwise stop okay so it just keeps going to whatever fires it can find and extinguishes them if the distance is less than five set idle stand still and if we're standing still and the attended fire is ongoing or no the attended fire is not ongoing then stop nearest fire if there is a nearest fire that's not the same one we are attending and it's within 30 units determine the next state say this sound and if we're stopping then reduce the number of firemen putting out the fire set pedestrian state to none wander around reset the attended fire set it to ready and just walk see this is the state machines right here I always appreciate being able to look at this, right? This is the core business logic right here that controls how these pedestrians behave. And I think it's really cool to be able to look at the state machine and see just state by state, see it move through each branch of logic. Then we have medics. So if they're not in the vehicle and the pedestrian is in control, then scan for threats. If the threat is a pedestrian and the threat is the player. And if that threat entity is of type melee i guess if they don't have a weapon on them then kill the character that's the objective <laughs> otherwise they do have some other type of weapon then flee that's interesting all right folks so that's it for now my brain hurts a little bit from looking at all that code uh yeah i think i learned a thing or two from that it was kind of cool i'm definitely going to keep looking through that code and trying to extract value from it 
but it was fun to take a look at that. And yeah, I think I'll do this again next time for a different game. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Anyway, that's it for now. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, support a little YouTuber like myself. And thank you for watching.